Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Frenchman's Creek by Daphne du Maurier. Uh, so I'm going to read the blurb to you. I will say this is a Varego modern classic, and their edition of Rebecca, the introduction essay in that, spoiled Rebecca for me. I did read the essay in this, but I actually read the essay when I first bought the book, and it's been so long since then that I don't remember it, so we're alright. So the blurb here. Lady Donna St. Column is beautiful, headstrong, and bored. Desperate to escape the pomp and ritual of the Restoration Court, she retreats to the hidden creeks and secret woods of the family estate at Navron and Cornwall. Though renowned for her passionate engagement with life, privately she yearns for freedom, integrity and love, whatever the cost. The peace Lady Donna craves, however, eludes her from the moment she stumbles across the mooring place of a white-sailed ship that plunders the Cornish coast. And as she becomes embroiled in a plot to steal another ship from under the nose of the English authorities, she realises that her heart is under siege from the French philosopher pirate Jean Aubrey. So, this is my third de Maurier book now, and I've got to say, I just don't think her writing style is really for me. I appreciate it, I just don't enjoy it while I'm reading it, you know. And this book has kind of convinced me to, because I did have her entire bibliography on my wish list, and I'm going to remove that. I might still pick up books by her in the future, as and when I see them in charity shops and stuff, but I'm not going to go out of my way to read them for sure. Um, this was also a buddy read as well. I liked this little exchange here. Um, oh, he is that sort of pirate then, murmured Donna. No lives have been lost as yet, and none of our women have been taken, said Godolphin stiffly. But, but as this fellow is a Frenchman, we all realise that it is only a question of time before something dastardly occurs. So we see this ship, and uh, it says, They were passing now under the stern of the ship, beneath the high poop deck and the scrolled windows, and there was the name written with a flourish in gold letters, La Mouet. She wondered what it meant. She could not remember. Her French was hazy suddenly. And now he was pointing to the ladder over the side of the ship, and the men on deck were crowding round, grinning familiar, damn their eyes, to watch her mount. So, La Mouet is feminine. We know that. Uh, we find out a bit more about it here. Perhaps they have a fellow feeling for the ship, he said. It is my fault for naming her Lam Lamoué. Lamoué, the seagull. Why, of course, she said. I had forgotten what it meant. So, yeah, that's what I've got for you so far. I only started reading it today, so I'm going to give you an update tomorrow. The guy says, uh, Frenchmen have a reputation for gallantry which is entirely without foundation. We are shyer than you give us credit for. It's kind of a relatable thing here. Uh... <laughs> so they're talking about... Um... Oh, let me just go from the start of this quote. Why are you laughing, she said. Because your face was so serious, as though you were considering writing a treatise on incompatibility. Perhaps I may do so in my old age. The Lady St. Colin must write with knowledge of her subject. That is essential to all treatises. Possibly I have that knowledge. Possibly you have. But to make the treatise complete, you must add a final word on compatibility. It does happen, you know, from time to time, that a man finds a woman who is the answer to all his more searching dreams. And the two have understanding of each other, from the lightest moment to the darkest mood. But it does not happen very often. No, not very often. Questionable line here. You have a tan on, haven't you? You're as dark as a gypsy. She says, uh, I must be get... She says, I am getting old, she said gently, chewing a stem of grass. In a few weeks, I shall be 30. In a few months, I'll be 31. So basically, here again, it's talking about... Uh, there's a lot of dramatic irony here, especially in this notable scene near the end when the pirate kind of takes a bunch of people hostage. And he's like robbing from this woman who's like his lover, but obviously they're pretending not to know each other. And um, she's been out on the high, well, on the seas with him on the ship, and so she's got a tan. And um, she's trying to convince everybody she just has a fever and jaundice. So I'm going to read this paragraph here. She began to dress slowly and with great care, curling her dark ringlets around her fingers and placing them behind her ears. And into the ears themselves, she screwed the rubies, and round her neck, she clasped the ruby pendant. For Donna St. Colum in her green satin gown, with her ringlets and her jewels, must bear no resemblance to that bedraggled cabin boy of La Mouette, who she was pretending to be, who, with the rain streaming down his thin shirt, had stood beneath Philip Rashley's window only five days ago. She looked at herself in the mirror, and then up at the portrait on the wall, and she saw how she had changed, even, the sh even in the short while she had been at Navron, for her face had filled out, and the sulky look had gone from her mouth, and there was something different about her eyes, as Rockingham had said. As for her gypsy tan, there was no concealing it, and her hands and throat were burnt too by the sun. Who in the world will believe, she thought of herself, that this is the result of a fever, that the sunburn is a jaundice? Harry, perhaps, he has so little imagination, but Rockingham, never. But of course people do believe it, because it's easier to believe that than to believe that this woman might actually have her own independent thoughts and desires. <laughs> Overall, 
It was alright. Uh, to the start of this book, I was kind of worrying about it, and I was thinking about removing Daphne du Maurier from my wish list. I mean, not to say that I wouldn't still pick up her books from charity shops, but I wouldn't actively hunt her down. But she did redeem herself towards the end. This is the third of her books that I've read, and really, I've only really enjoyed Rebecca. Uh, this one I gave a 3.25 out of 5 to. It was okay. I am going to soldier on with the Maurier. I think this just wasn't really my thing, but it was beautifully written. So there we have it. Those are my thoughts on Frenchman's Creek by Daphne du Maurier. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.